Uh, so, um, if you think you're here for something other than looking at some modern web stuff, CSS3, if you think you're for doing something on back web filters, you're in the wrong room, get out. Uh, everyone else, uh, welcome. Uh, modern Web's here, it's here to stay, and we have a lot of awesome stuff in store. Um, before we begin with that, I have one pet project of mine I'd like to make a request of all of you. Uh, there's an awesome webcomic called Foxtrot. Uh, run by a guy named Bill Amend, but apparently he's not familiar with updating WordPress. Netflix running on WordPress 2.8.4. Please tweet him and ask him to update his site. Sorry, personal campaign of mine. All right, um, who am I and why should you care? Uh, my name is George Stefanis. I am a core contributor. Uh, my name on Twitter, if you can get a hold of me. Um, basically, I've been doing a lot of stuff recently with uh, CSS3, HTML5, and there's a lot more to them than what a lot of marketing people hear and say, okay, hey, this is the new thing, this is Web 2.0, this is the latest marketing thing. Let's actually dig in, get some improvements, uh, and roll with it. Um, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be taking the old classic Kubrick theme that everybody knows, remembers, it was the current default theme, it's still named default, uh, and WordPress up to 2.9. Uh, currently, every single thing you see here, the rounded corners, uh, the background, everything, is all images. Uh, this is bad for a number of reasons. Uh, when we move stuff from the existing images format to CSS3, we get several benefits. First, bandwidth. Uh, if your server has to serve up a number of images, every single image that it takes, is an extra request to the server, it's slowing down your server. There's more images, more files running from the server to your user, which is especially notable if they're on a mobile device. Uh, second is server requests. Like I said, that's a thing to the server, something the server has to take time and respond to. Uh, so by decreasing that, everything winds up speeding. Uh, the third and most important of them, in my opinion anyways, is as Apple's releasing things with retina displays and higher DPI resolutions are coming to the forefront, there has been a lot of discussion recently about responsive images. How do we uh, make sure that if we have something with a higher resolution display, that we're serving something that looks crisp, that, looks, that doesn't look blurry. Uh, some folks have been paying towards SVG images for that, some have been turning towards icon fonts. Uh, by using CSS3, we can use that and uh, by using uh, border radius or using uh, CSS gradients or drop shadows, instead of having to worry about pixelating, we can trust that the browser we're using is going to display it at the best resolution that it can. So now what we do, it's going to look up. It's going to turn out looking crisp, clean, sharp, and just beautiful as we go forward. So, digging into the code base, this here is the Kubrick theme. Uh, it's a lot smaller than the more modern ones we've been packaging with WordPress. Uh, digging in for the header and the footer as the main thing we're going to hit. Uh, who here is familiar with the new elements that we have in HTML5? Header, footer, aside, article. All right. Um, they're, they all have their own special semantic meaning. Um, this is good for a number of things. This is fantastic for SEO because Google doesn't have to guess and think, okay, here's your content, or here's your header, here's your footer, here's your menu. Uh, we're going to do a really simple hack job on this. So we're going to take out some of the markup that we're not going to need. Uh, we're going to call this here a footer. And this is going to end our footer tag. Save that. Crack back here. Now in our header, we're, the doc type for HTML is really, really simple. We're just going to take it, tidy it up, cut this here out, cut this here out, and suddenly the beginnings of our page look a lot more readable. And with HTML5, we do meta carousel directly. For specifying the character set our blog is in. Uh, title, leave that, leave that, and we're going to be doing this differently, so I'm going to leave that in there for the moment, but we're going to come back and clean it out shortly. Uh, as we get in, uh, one of the things that has always bugged me 
don't think we'll use too much markup. Looking at this page, you've got currently uh, this great background is your body pad. Uh, this, everything you see here is the actual body of the page. That's currently in a div ID page. I think we can do it a little bit cleaner. So what we're going to be changing it to, this, what you see here in the middle, is going to be our body pad. What we see back here is going to be our HTML tag. Yes, I'm going to be signing the HTML tag and they're going to look completely different. So, bouncing back here, what we're going to do is clean out the div ID page and change this to header. As I like things being semantic, we're going to change from div class description to an h2 tag. And as we don't want things to parse our site and think, okay, here's a header one, it's got content, and then h2 has separate content, we're going to use another new at, uh, element called an h group. All that means is that we are grouping logically the child things together, saying this is one group of headers. Maybe rank differently, but when you're outlining it, just clump them together. So, save that, crack back, and see where we're looking. Absolutely horrible, right? Okay. Um, oh, shucks, I forgot my card. All right, so as we're going now into the styling, everything we do from here on now is going to be on our style sheet. So, we're, as I said, we're changing our body to HTML. That's going to be our background gradient. Uh, change page to body. And the styling we're going to do, uh, as I said, we're yanking out every single image in this theme. So we're going to change the background to uh, E7077, which is the background gray. Save it. And then on the body, which is our central area, uh, we're going to add in uh, really nothing as of yet. Take a look at where we are. There we go. Uh, I'm going fast for anyone, please shout out and stop me. I don't mind. Um, so, page. There we go. Uh, so, let's get our rounded corners on it and the background, a drop shadow. So, we're going to declare a border radius. Seven pixels and a box shadow. Syntax for box shadow. Who's got it? Anyone? Three pixel knots and color. Pardon? Pixel, 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 and color. Right. What do you use for color normally? Do you use like a gray? No, uh, you mean, I mean text, RGB, or RGBA? RGBA? Why? Then you do alpha? Exactly, thank you. So, we've seen a number of times. Uh, have you ever pull up a site and you see a background gradient happening and it doesn't look like it's quite matching the same color at the edge of it? That's because a lot of folks will declare a background gradient. If you're doing it on white, they might call it of uh, triple A. So it's a half gray and it fades out close, but as soon as your background color changes, the entire thing needs to be changed up. We like to avoid that, so RGBA is something that we can do now uh, that is just like the old RGB standard. RG and B are 0 through 255. A is anywhere from 0 to 1. It tells you how opaque the color you're placing in front of it is. So for this, just for the moment, we're going to call it box shadow 0, and that's your left to right shift. Uh, 1 pixels which is we're bumping it down a pixel. Uh, two pixel, which is your blur radius. And RGBA, not, 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 
now, the Kubrick style sheet is a bit antiquated, uh, so it's broken up things in a bit more than I typically do. So what we see right here is up at the top, everything is beginning with topography and colors. And as we scroll down, we get to the structure. So this is uh, keeping things completely separate. So all your typography colors are up top, and you stop saying where is placed down at the bottom, or at least in the middle. Uh, so down here we're going to call margin is auto. We want to center it. Crank it over and see where we are. Pardon? Oh, yes. There we go. So this is getting a little bit closer to what we're trying to get. Now, what we've got right now body tag is stretching the entire way a bit wider than we want. Uh, this is because the image right up here uh, was actually counting in a bit of the gradient coming out. We're going to squeeze that a little bit close together um, and then see where we are. So, let's see, we're going to call the body tag uh, See, it's currently width 760. Let's call it 720 and see what we get. Okay. Uh, closer and let's try a little bit of padding in there. All right. So now we've got. Our thing sized approximately right. Uh, count, we've got about a finger or so here. About a finger or so there, so I think we've got our width about right. And as we go, um, may as well get the header knocked out next. So we've got the header, header image. We're yanking entirely, and the header itself, we're changing this so we've got uh, we don't need our one pixel margin anymore. Just tie that down to zero, no padding. Got our height. We're squeezing this down because we no longer need the extra 18 pixels at the top. We're going to squeeze that down to 182. Uh, and we're going to call our width right about out. It's blocked, so it's automatically going to stretch as wide as it can. And there we go. Now that is still the background image pulling in. So we're going to need to pull out the colors uh, and generate a background gradient. Does anyone use tools to generate background gradients or what do you use? Yeah. And my favorite tool normally is just using a digital color meter. So we're going to pick out the top color, which I got as 
Let's just go right back in and match that. Border radius. Uh, not, not 7 pixels, not 7 pixels. Uh, as with all things, when we're just declaring different ways going around, it's always going to be, if we're doing sides, top, right, bottom, left, every one you drop off will just take its mirror image. So if you only declare three, that's top, right, bottom, and then left will match the right. If you declare two, bottom will match top, left will match right. When you're doing corners, it's the same thing, except we're going top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. We're always going clockwise. So, saving that, crack that over, and, you know, it looks pretty good to me. So, matching it now against our original, let's see where it's going. Okay, looks like we've got the after pseudo element, but it needs to be given a height. So let's give it a shot and see where 80 pixels us. Our narrow column and our wide column. I have to go back and look at this. We've got class narrow column, and then we go to an individual post page. Check the same element. We've got class wide column. We need to count for both of these. Currently, we can see that we've got it a little bit off centered, just because of how we've been shifting things around a bit. Uh, so let's get these both taken care of. Uh, for narrow column, we're going to change our padding left. 
uh, to 125 ohm. Oops. Uh, or sorry, just 25. Uh, and then for our Y column, which is the single post page, uh, we're going to be stretching it a little bit uh, to give it margin five pixels, auto zero. Because all we really want to do is just center it there. Uh, there's no reason to forcibly skew it from one side or another. So clear that out. This is looking a little bit better there. And There we go. So now we're looking right a lot closer. Now we just got our header to look at. So over here we've got a header image. Now we've changed our div class of description header to an H2 tag. This is just going to change to header H2. And The H2. And we should also specify just for header H1. That one we're going to actually want to pull padding top only 52 pixels. Save it. Pull it. Now we've got a minor margin glitch between two of them, but if we can align the top, I think we've got that one set. I just need to pull this. We've also got a minor font change here. So we're going to want to pull the font from uh, City Grand, I think it was. And that looks better. So and then at that point, once we're in the header H2, we've got to pull the margin up. Margin top knot. Gotta make it white. And then it looks a little bold. Is that right on that? Yes, it's still saying the bold is it's a title tag. So now we're pulling it and saying font weight 500. Oops. Oh, come on. All right. and everything looks about right to me. Mm -hmm. The only thing we've got remaining is just a minor couple pixels here. And that should just be under the structure. We're going to take our body and change the margin on this. Now for the differences. And for seven pixels, auto. 25 pixels. Clear it, pull it back, crush it, and it looks pixel perfect to me. Aha, a little bit of spacing in our footer. There we go. And at that point, we just got our footer. Zeros. 
zero. And then over P, we're just going to do the with the padding of uh, four pixels. And that, we might add a couple of the heights on the gradients a little bit off. But apart from that, that's how you take the classic Kubrick theme, pump it up, and line up with CSS3. Um, the biggest benefits we've gotten here, as I said at the beginning, uh, this, all the gradients are not going to be like images, so they are going to automatically scale by the browser. Um, we don't have images that are going to transfer, so that's less request to the server. Uh, and that's a much quicker page load time. Um, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, are there any questions for anything CS related? Yeah. Um, we are going to have a little bit of graceful degradation in older versions of IE that don't support background gradient. Uh, the gradient color tool that we use actually uses a proprietary Internet Explorer image filter uh, that's going to mimic them, but we're also going to lose our box shadow and our rounded corners, but as far as that comes, it's going to be a little bit of the price of moving the web forward. Um, is it going to look perfect in the other older browsers? No. Um, are folks going to be comparing it to the older browsers with the new one? Not exactly either, so as long as it looks good for them, I really don't stress about it looking completely pixel perfect. Uh, I only did for this because if we're mimicking it in Modern browsers, we may as well try and get it as close as we can. Yes, anyone? Yeah? Uh, so I've read a lot of sites that have a lot of background images, things like buttons, uh, hard receipts for buttons, uh, and various elements that are visual on the page. I've just been putting them onto a single spreadsheet um, and calling that spreadsheet positioning from different images. But I find that's a place where a lot of images. Uh, more efficient way, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand that. That was uh, to pull in sprites? Well, yeah, for like things like buttons, uh, mm -hmm. individual page elements. Mm -hmm. And I know definitely things like backgrounds and dips on the page and all that type of thing. You can uh, pretty much move them just all together. I just take sure. one spreadsheet for all the different elements, like buttons and those types of things. Is there a more efficient way you can do that? Uh, yeah, there's lots of we can do as far as uh, buttons come, just doing them purely via CSS. Um, we can do, uh, as we already saw we can do gradients one direction. So uh, just using CSS, we can uh, reverse the gradient. Uh, at that point, we can change the border, uh, the color, some text shadow, drop shadow. And really, I have yet to see anything other than something that would obviously need to be completely done with an image, but anything with just like a classical uh, Photoshop halo hey, here, the shiny button. Most of that can be mimicked uh, darn near close perfectly in CSS. I'll flag you down after and I'll run through a couple of the sites I know with examples of that for you and help you out with that. Um, yeah? Just to follow up on that, another thing that I've seen recently is use of icon fonts. Yes. Where you actually have, you don't have any image in your markup or even in your CSS, but you use the fonts with CSS pseudo selectors to display like a icon class and then icons. Yeah, that actually something that came up uh, this Wednesday on our scope meeting for uh, WordPress 3.5. It's been kicked around as a possibility. I'm not positive it's going to be in, but we're talking about the idea of using an icon font for the admin UI to get all of the little icons on the menu items. Uh, one of the beauties of icon fonts is as it is a vector and as it is a font, you can scale it up, down as big as you need to, and you're never really going to have to worry about it losing resolution on a retina display. So by keeping that uh, just as a font, we wind up, we can do some fun stuff with uh, text shadows. We can uh, dynamically change the color of it with CSS animations. So 
you know, some of the links you hover over and it, instead of just clicking from blue to red, it does this awesome animation or update or something like that. We can do that with the icon fonts as well, which normally results in a lot more interactive as opposed to something that you're stuck with uh, a sprite where you can flip from one to the other, but you can't really get all the states in between unless you want a really, really complicated sprite. So that's something that we're really actively looking at and I see as being very promising. Uh, um, up next, we have a break. So please go get a snack, take a break, and escape the kind of like sweaty locker room vibe we've got going in here. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it.